We all know what happened to this thing the first time I threw it. But now I'm gonna make one out of this stuff. Real carbon fiber. Since the original design of this boomerang worked really well, right up until the point that it spontaneously disassembled itself, I'm gonna stick with it. And instead of making it out of garbage half-inch plywood, I'm using balsa wood to make the core for this thing. And they didn't have half-inch, so I had to get two quarter-inch sheets, and I'm using contact cement to put them together because wood glue is way harder than balsa wood is, so it would make it difficult to sand later. I could have used foam for this, but balsa wood is a lot more rigid. And I like working with this stuff. But it weighs about the same as foam, so I still get the lightness. Light, lightweight. Check out my sweet rig to dry the spot filler that I'm using to fix the wing from when the belt sander tried to eat it. You always think it's gonna be a quick project, but even when you're doing something you already did, you never know what's gonna go wrong. Now it's time for the difficult part. I'm jumping the gun. I gotta shape the ends first. Now I can glue them. I'm hoping that this is strong enough to make it stick. I think it will be. The added benefit of sticking these wings on with glue is that I don't have to try to carve an upturn angle, like a angle of attack, you know? Like in an airplane, you get lift if the wing is riding flat. You know, this is obviously very exaggerated. You get way more lift because the wings actually have an angle of attack, you know? Does that make sense? And I have no reference to go off of for this, so I'm just gonna glue them on and we'll see what happens. Just like every other project I've done on this channel. I think it's the most fun way to do things. If you wanna do math, be my guest. I'm gonna stick with wing it. Get it? Wing it. <laughs> Wow, that was a dad joke. <laughs> I'm taking a lot more time on this one than I did on the original one. And I'm hoping it pays off, because if this flies worse than the original one, that would suck. And the last one worked really well, and I'd never thrown a boomerang before. I'd never made a boomerang before, but it worked. So let's hope this one does. Hopefully it works better, since it's gonna be made out of carbon fiber and be awesome. This is gonna take some time. Two hours later. Well, I am pretty pleased with this, especially for not having a laser cutter or a 3D printer or any of that fancy jazz, just whittling it out of wood. I don't know if you can tell all the angles that are on there. Anyway, I'm gonna sand this a little bit and then it's time to do carbon fiber. If you've ever cut out fiberglass or carbon fiber cloth like this that's woven, you know that when you cut it, it goes all over the place and starts to unravel and come apart. But Brain Food TV is another YouTube channel and I was talking to him and he said, spray it down with spray glue and it'll hold it together and it's much easier to work with. And then I can spray the boomerang down with spray glue and when I put it on, it'll stay in place for me to put the resin on. And since this is a rocket project, I should point it toward his video because he made Yondu's arrow, I think it is, from Guardians of the Galaxy, the one where he he whistles and it flies around and kills people, except his is a rocket and he set it up so that when he whistles, it launches and he fires it from his hand and it, it's pretty awesome. If you haven't seen it, you're missing out. Secret weapon number two, self-healing cutting mat and a rotary cutter. Uh, this stuff is crazy tacky. So sticky. I have to wait till it's tack free. This is where it broke last time. So hopefully it doesn't break here this time. Those are reinforced. Time to do the main body sections. Obviously you can, you can tell I cut a lot of extra, but once it goes down into like the curves and whatnot, I don't know how much it's gonna use up. If the wings are gonna get angled and then I won't have enough material. So I'd rather have too much than too little. If I screw this up right now, I have to wait another week to get more carbon fiber. I didn't screw it up. There's one side stuck. The question is now, there's lots of questions. Do I try to glue the other side on and then put the epoxy resin on the whole thing all at once? Or do I want, want to do one side and then the other? I don't know. I mean, I'm gonna have to respray that one anyway, which I don't necessarily want to do. I kind of need to. I'm gonna try to do it all at once. So you're supposed to be able to handle it in an hour. I'll just do both sides 
at the same time. And if I do it that way, I can put the rocket engine mounts on it right now also. This stuff sure does look pretty. This side is gonna be a little bit more difficult because it's there's a big dip right there, so it's gonna tend to pull this wing that way. So I'm gonna have to make sure I watch out for that. Let's see if I remember when I'm actually putting it on. Not that I'm forgetful or anything. Well, that worked out very nicely. This spray adhesive trick is a total lifesaver. Brain Food TV is pretty much my hero right now. All done. Now I just need to come up with some rocket engine mounts to hold the, the rocket motors on the bottom of the wings. And I have to find the CG and all that good stuff. Somewhere around there. Time to do the epoxy. Here we go. Gotta let it sit for a while now. It's finished, mostly. And it looks pretty cool, but it's not that beautiful because, well, it's not going on an F1 car. I'm gonna throw it into a field. And I have no idea how far this thing is gonna go once those rockets turn on. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and you wanna see this thing in action. But if you do subscribe, make sure you watch my videos. And I know this isn't completely finished, but right after this video gets uploaded, there's gonna be a live stream where I work on the other parts that need to be put on to make the rockets turn on when I throw it. So make sure your notifications are turned on so you can come hang out with me and my friend Bryce and ask us all the questions you want and watch me finish this thing. Thanks for watching. See you in a couple minutes. If you're still watching, you know that at the end of my videos I usually post something funny, like an outtake where I hurt myself. But this time I want to talk to you about something that's important to me. When I was in high school, I got diagnosed with ADHD. And ever since then, I've tried to push through life without any help like medicine or anything like that because I thought that I should be able to function like normal people do. For a long time now I felt like I could never be as effective and productive as other people could be and not because I have ADHD but just because I felt like I couldn't function like other people did and it was because I was lazy or forgetful or late. Since I started YouTube I've been having a much more difficult time with it but recently a friend sent me a video of a TED talk by a lady named Jessica McCabe and she has a YouTube channel called How to ADHD. But after just a short time of watching her videos, it's had a profound impact on my life and I realize that that's not the case. So if you have ADHD or a friend, family member, or loved one does, I suggest you check out the videos and I highly recommend you let them know about her channel so that they can check out the videos. It'll be extremely beneficial. And her videos are really funny and really well made. That's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the live stream in a couple minutes. Or if you're watching this video really late, you can just go back and watch the live stream that's already posted. Bye.